Hey guys, Aaron here again. Good to see so many of my subscribers back. You guys have really been fantastic and an encouragement for this channel. Today I wanna to talk about TPMS, or Tire Pressure Monitoring Sensors. I got to learn a lot about them today and it cost me a lot of money. So I just thought I'd take the info that I've learned and share it with you guys. This all started a couple days ago when I took off my normal summer wheels and put on my winter set. I just bought these two seasons ago secondhand from a local guy and they came with sensors in them already. I didn't know anything about the sensors, where they came from, how long they've been here. All I knew is that when I mounted them on last winter, they worked fine. And when I took them off, they were still working. But a couple days ago, I went to put them back on because it's getting cold again and as soon as I got in the car and started driving it I got a TPM failure error in my car and I thought oh yeah I haven't reset these yet with the new wheel so it's confused because it's looking for the sensors in the old wheels. Well, I went to go reset it, started driving, and it would get all the way up to 49% finished and it would sit there for a long time and finally fail. So I looked this up online, of course, and the most common obvious problem was that the battery died in one of them. So I took it over to NTB, a local tire place that was really close to my house, and they used a generic tool to scan the sensors, and they thought that the front right one was bad, and the other three they were able to get a reading off of, which I thought, awesome, just one sensor, just got to replace that. Found out that they don't do that for BMWs because they have to be programmed somehow. So I called up a local independent BMW mechanic called Eurobon here in Greensboro, North Carolina, and made an appointment to take it over to them. So here's the tool they used, and here's what they found. All right, so we got Maxi TPMS tool here. You go through, find your make, uh -huh. and you find your model. In your year, it's a 2015, so 2014 through present. All right. You got scan sensor. Uh -huh. You got to put it up to the TPMS, and you trigger. And we've got a signal from this one, so okay. we'll go on to the next one. Yep. Trigger it again. If it doesn't, Nothing coming out of that one. Yeah, if it doesn't get a signal, it's going to say uh, it failed on here in a second. Uh huh. So that usually Sometimes, means like the battery died on yes. them finally? Either that or whenever someone changed the tire, they snap the TPMS and so uh -huh. that or battery died. Gotcha. And there's no way to replace a battery, right? You just That's have correct. to you have replace the whole sensor. Yeah, trigger failed. So you move on to the next one. Uh -huh. well, I did this beforehand, so I know these three are bad. Sometimes it takes a while for it, but these two, these three have So this yeah. thing is reading the frequency that is supposed to be for this model year. Correct. This car. Like it has an antenna somewhere up in here. Uh -huh. And this is doing the same job that the antenna is doing. Right, yep. And the antenna sends it to the uh, TPMS monitor control computer. So I took him into just a uh, like NTB or whatever tire shop. Yeah. And they used a generic scanner. And this one wouldn't read, but all the other three read uh, really? two days ago. <laughs> Weird. So is there like a generic kind of frequency you can, uh, I think, checks with? Or, because I know they didn't do, I don't think they did a specific well, uh, brand or anything on them. Yeah, 433 megahertz. Oh, that one got one. Huh. That's weird because that's the one that didn't yeah. read <laughs> for them. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was just out here and I did it again and it didn't read. Right, yeah. So after going back and forth for a while, it seems like the driver's front wheel was the only one that would continually pick up a good signal. The other three, sometimes it would pick it up, sometimes it would fail completely and not detect that there was a sensor there. So what I decided to do was bite the bullet, buy a whole set of four of them and have them install them for me because I figured if I just bought three, that fourth one was going to fail sometime too probably. One of the things they noticed was that my valve stems were rubber and bendable and they had never seen that before. All of the ones that they had dealt with had been metal. And of course, the new ones that they sourced me were metal. So I wanna show you a little bit of the process of what they did to get the sensor out. All right, from the beginning. Flip the air out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Uh, they're very small sensors. Um, which I'm wondering if that may have to do with why they ended up running out a little bit more quickly. I'm assuming the battery that's in there is probably not all that big. So we were able to those disconnect are, those. Yeah, so those are standard rubber valve stems. <laughs> um, definitely not compatible with the new ones that we're putting on there. Right. Um, but they were able to somehow fit with those ones, but kind of an unusual setup. Probably one of the smallest sensors I've seen. Huh. Yeah, Almost looks like a half sensor. Here's the... Uh... Yeah, I have to look these things up and see what they are. Yeah, of course you're welcome to hold on to those. Um, yeah. Compared to the other one, the factory one. Uh, yeah, it's uh, a little bit different there. Yeah. Of course you can see the way that the mount is constructed with the valve stem. It is a totally different setup. That one has screw this yeah. one. That's screwed on the bottom. So these things were sticking through there. So these things assembled like they got a what is it? This. Ah, in from that direction. Yeah. And you put the screw in through the bottom. Screw in through there. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. And that's a ten millimeter or uh, e ten. E ten. Get you. Hmm. T ten light. Kind of helps if you have a ratchet in there. I mean, you can take it out by hand after right. you break it loose. The fun part begins getting the piece of rubber out. <laughs> Onto the cap here, like a cap lid. What's that thing called? It's a uh, stem remover. Okay. You need something to put on the wheel so you don't damage it. At the time, it's just going to be resting on the wheel, but that starts out on the on the wheel here. Just brute force those things in. <laughs> and you just brute force them out. Brute force them out. Just pry down. You have to twist it a little bit and then do it the other way. And they wind up breaking most of the time. <laughs> uh, yep. And the other piece is still stuck down in there, so you gotta pull it out through the bottom. The other ones didn't do that. They came right out. <laughs> Drop in there. Take your, uh... So this is how it mounts in. It's got a little uh, metal bracket here, metal stopper here, uh -huh. and you put the cap on, and it tightens it down to here and on the wheel. Put the cover on. Tighten it down with an 11 millimeter. You don't want to do it too tight. Otherwise, you want to break it. Mm -hmm. You take the valve core out. Put some lube on it so it doesn't break the sensor when you uh, go back up with it. All the way around the shot. Keep the sensor itself up. Yeah. It won't hurt it.
It's gonna be a nice little pop here. Yeah. So. <laughs> Double check, 32, what the car says on the plaque. Cat back on. I'm gonna verify it works. You made it look easy. Bam. Turn swing KPA, 32. Much better than before. Uh, yes. <laughs> All right, apparently that little reader at the end there, when it scanned the sensor, I thought that they were just checking to make sure it worked, but they told me afterwards that it is actually initiating the sensor. That's what people call programming the sensor that you have to do sometimes, but essentially it tells it, wake up, start using battery, uh, you're gonna start being needed. And these sensors ran me a hundred bucks a piece, so it was not a cheap day. But as soon as they replaced all four, they put the wheels back on the car, drove it, and it was able to reset properly the first time. No issues. So that was the problem. And now I can drive with peace of mind with these new sensors that they will last me a long time. And I guess they're warranted. So if they don't, I'll get them replaced for free. So I just wanted to show you the sensors that I ended up putting in. They're made by VDO. And that's uh, the info about them. And these are the mystery sensors that were in there, made in the UK by schraderservice.com, it looks like. And you can see they're also 433 megahertz. It says Easy Sensor by Schrader. It looks like it maybe says January of 17 on that first one. I'm not sure if that's the case. I'm really surprised they're not working already. It actually says replace valve and screw with every tire change. and the valve stems that came out. But anyway, that's my tire pressure monitoring sensor story. So I hope you guys learned something along the way. I hope this was helpful to you in case you've come across this same problem while trying to reset your sensors. Anyway, if you don't mind subscribing to the channel, give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful, and I'll see you on the next project.